Christian Communications Network from Belfast, Northern Ireland, welcomes you to today's programme. Here is Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart, OBE. I want to speak today about rebuilding broken lives. This is a subject close to my own heart because I know what it is to have broken dreams. I know what it is uh, as a young person to be attacked with tuberculosis, with severe depression, and there's nobody can understand your hurts more than a person who's already walked through those hurts. Uh, and those who've suffered anxiety or depression, you, you really know what to do when you minister to others because you've been there. And I've been there. My wife and I have both, as you may know, suffered amazing attacks from the enemy, but amazing blessings from God. Uh, yes, she was given up to die with cancer many, many years ago, given days to live. And uh, Evelyn's here with me tonight, and we will soon be celebrating 50 years of marriage. Isn't that good? <laughs> uh, and enjoying the blessing of the Lord. Uh, so we know what we're talking about, not from theology, but from experience. Yes. And uh, we used to say back home in County Monaghan, where I come from, an ounce of experience is worth a ton of theory. And so once you've experienced the healing power of Jesus that loses your mind from a, a vice of depression and anxiety and hopelessness, once you've been set free from diseases that were incurable, and once you've been lifted out of a pit that was so deep you could never see yourself getting out of it, once you've come out of that, the first thing you want to do is help others get out. And so I have a passion to rebuild broken lives. And the story is based in Nehemiah. You can read the chapter very carefully later in Nehemiah chapter 4. And in fact, on through the whole book of Nehemiah is a wonderful vision of what God wants us to be involved in about building, rebuilding broken lives, hurting people, because God has a heart for hurting people. Amen. That is why he sent Jesus to the cross. That is why he shed his blood and he gave his life for you and I. That's why his back was striped beyond recognition and by his stripes were healed because he has a heart for hurting broken people who've lost hope. So we're in the business of rebuilding broken lives. There is a scripture, first of all, in Proverbs 29, 18, you know it very well. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Another translation says, where there's no vision, people cast off restraint. But when you have a vision for the future, it empowers your present. If you have no hope or vision for the future, you have no power in your present. But when you have a vision for the future and great expectation of what God is doing and going to do, it gives you power and purpose and passion to live a life on your tiptoe of expectancy every day because you know every single day you're going to have the chance of talking to someone who's burdened or in need or has a loved one that's needing healing or set free from depression, anxiety, somebody who's on drugs or alcohol abuse. Every day you meet people and you as a believer have the power to rebuild broken lives. Yes. Not through preaching at them or condemning them, but sharing the love of God and letting them sense the power of the Holy Spirit and the anointing of God that breaks every single yoke. And so study that very carefully because the scripture tells us we need to have a vision. What is your vision for your life? Those watching by television, what is your purpose? What are you hoping to do in the next six months, one year, five years? What are you living for? God Almighty has called you to live on this earth with real purpose. And he has given you a plan to overcome every obstacle, every struggle, every opposition of the enemy, and you can not only be a blessing to yourself, but you can be a blessing to everyone you work with. Amen. Because the transforming power of God's great salvation and God's wonderful anointing yes. makes you dynamite for to change lives. And the enemy is a scared of you. He is scared of you. The devil hits the message we preach because he knows it opens people's eyes to see who they really are. A vision of your future. 
will change your whole life. And so we then we'll be able to build, rebuild those broken lives. A wonderful verse, you can look at it later also in Psalm 102, verses 13, right through to 32 or 22. It says, the set time to favor God's people has now come. The set time to favor has now come. I believe this is to his church today. He says, you will have arise, arise and have mercy on Zion, which is the church, for the set time to favor her is come. And I believe we're living in very special times in a world that's so full of turmoil and fear, with so much division and bitterness and sectarianism, and not just in this country, but in many other parts of the world where there's great fear of war and great strife and great division. This is a golden opportunity for those of us who are full of the love of God to pour it out because it's going to be in big demand. People are looking for real purpose. People are looking for real vision. Why am I here? What is my purpose? How can I overcome the obstacles that I face in the family with strife, with misunderstandings, with offense, with division? Well, Jesus came to bring us into unity with the Father. And if we walk in his ways, we will be able to overcome offense, overcome anxiety, overcome the various obstacles that is tormenting people today. And we will become people like Nehemiah, who will rebuild broken lives. And so the story in Nehemiah is that the walls of Jerusalem had been broken down. There was great devastation. There was great fear. The enemy had held the people to ransom and they felt they could not overcome. But as Nehemiah began to seek a way to help his generation, God showed him how he could be used to rebuild the broken down walls. And I believe as we have a vision to look to him, he will show us a vision of how we can build the broken lives of people all around us. And so as Nehemiah began to take steps of faith toward rebuilding the walls, the scripture says that there were others who joined him. They then went to the king and the king was amazingly helpful. And not only did he agree with the plan for them to rebuild the broken walls, but he also provided provision of the various materials and the support they needed. And as the people together rose up and began to build the walls, yes, the enemy did come against them. Those who were full of negativity, it tells us about Sanballat and Tobiah, and they wanted to meet in the valley of Ono, oh which is a valley you never want to go to. Oh no, oh no, it can't be done. So they want them to meet in the valley of Ono and say, come off those walls. You'll never get that wall built. Even if a fox hit the wall, it would fall down. And so the voice of the enemy is always negativity, unbelief and fear. The enemy wants you to feel inferior and isolated and hopeless. But I want to tell you, if you're a child of God and if you're born again, you're part of a mighty army that is invincible. You're part of a mighty army and God Almighty has called you to do his will on this earth. And you are not insignificant. You are not inferior. The Holy Spirit is in you and God is for you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? So he saw the broken down walls. He saw the task was so vast that he immediately began to seek partners who would stand with him. He developed a partnership to work with many other people. And he then recognized the importance of not only having a vision, but working together with other people. And I believe God in this hour, in the midst of all the pressures of the present age we're living in, God is going to bring his people closer together. No matter what denomination, no matter what your doctrinal emphasis may be, if you come to the cross and are born again, and if you belong to Jesus, you've been washed in the precious blood, then you are one in the family of God. And we are going to be joining hands with all kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds. Over the years, we've had the privilege 
of traveling widely. As some of you may know, we've been a lot in Africa, ministered all over Africa for many years, and saw millions of people literally touched through the television ministry, through the crusades where we had sometimes hundreds of thousands of people gathered in stadiums and fields uh, to listen to the word and to respond to the word. And we have seen the gospel work uh, in all kinds of backgrounds, amongst the Muslims, amongst Hindus, amongst all kinds of people. When they respond to the gospel, Jesus never fails to transform lives. So he will change your heart and change your circumstances, but you've got to get the word into you. One of the things I've realized over the years is that people grossly undervalue the Word of God. They grossly undervalue the Word of God. Because if we would take this Word as it really is and study it, it would not only transform our lives, but it would transform our vision and it would enable us and empower us to reach people that we never thought could be reached because we would be so full of the Word that the power of the Holy Spirit will flow out through us. And that's what happens. We get letters from different parts of the world through television all the time of how this word has changed their lives. They never knew they had any value. They felt isolated, they felt alone, they felt hopeless. But when they hear who they are in Christ and what Jesus really did at the cross and how the power of the Holy Spirit is available today, these people rise up and begin to study the word. I remember many years ago in Tralee, County Kerry, a man who had been radically born again, a farmer. He'd never had a Bible, never read, never even knew the reality of salvation, but he with many others in one of the meetings had been totally transformed. They told me later on that he spent many hours a day devouring the Bible. And he read it from cover to cover over and over. His life was transformed. And I believe we've got to develop a tremendous appetite for the Word. Amen? Because it's God and His Word are one. And when you let the Word come alive in your spirit, I'm not talking about just information for your brain. I'm talking about revelation in your heart. Amen. When the Word of God comes alive in you, and you know that you're not some weak need, hopeless person, but you are more than a conqueror, that you are redeemed, that you are full of God's wisdom, that you are full of God's power, and you can walk in love and not in hatred, you can walk in unity and not in division, you can be one who reconciles and not one who divides. And that is what the Lord has called us to do, to rebuild broken lives. And so as Nehemiah began this task, he realized after the vision, which was number one, he had a vision to see the walls rebuilt, to see the people set free. He had a vision to see restoration and reconciliation and people moving in the fullness of what they were meant to live in. But as soon as he had the vision, he recognized this task is too vast. This task is going to take us all to be involved. And aren't you glad we cannot do it alone? Amen? We cannot do much alone, but together we can do a lot. Amen. I quote J. John quite often from London, and we were at a conference, and uh, he was saying in the conference, none of us have got it all together, but together we've got it. Amen. <laughs> so we need to be together. I think that's the big emphasis in my heart at the moment, to value each other. Not only value the word, but value fellowship, value each other, value the community we come from, B believe that the community can be healed and that the hurts can be taken away and broken hearts can be healed. If you want to read later from Luke chapter 4, verse 18, I believe that is part of the call and vision that God has put on all of our lives because there in Luke chapter 4, 18, it shares how Jesus stood up in the temple and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to set the captives free, to recover sight to the blind, 
to restore lives. That's what it was really was about. And so this is our calling, the same calling as Jesus has, we have. And he said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. And so I just want to encourage you tonight to be builders, amen? To be people who know you're anointed to build. And we will see as Nehemiah seen, the building of the walls of truth and righteousness, the building of the walls of honor and expectancy for one another, uh, the buildings of the walls, not of division, but of God's wonderful truth that empowers us and enables us to fulfill the purpose of God. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, it says, we are workers together. And this is something we're going to see more and more. I believe we will see an increasing number of fellowships, churches, and people from different backgrounds coming together, praying together, believing God together, serving together, because we're workers together with him. You've only got to look at Acts chapter 2 where it says there, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So when we're in one accord in one place, the Holy Spirit begins to move. And so I'm expecting in this gathering tonight as we minister to people later, that there will be a manifestation of God's power, of his love, of his grace and mercy. And many of you will be empowered in a great way to even do more than you're doing. I know many of you are serving the Lord very diligently, but I believe God has got bigger things still for us to do. And I believe we should be reaching out for greater yes. harvest and bigger results and breakthroughs in families where there has been hurt and division, that those hurts and divisions will be healed, that there will be understanding where there's been misunderstanding, that there will be love where there's been hatred, that there will be healing where there's been so much pain. And I believe this is the time, right in this very season, because the Bible says, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. So God is going to empower us to do much more in these last days, right in the midst of trouble. When did God pour out his spirit most? If you look at the book of Acts, you'll find in Acts 4, for example, it was at a time of persecution, when they were being put in prison, and they were being forbidden to speak the word. That is when the word spread more than even in the easy times. So God will move in our lives and our families not necessarily when everything's peaceful and lovely, but in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of trials, in the midst of challenges, in the midst of big negative situations, we as, as God's people will have a voice of hope, a voice of mercy, a voice of love. Amen? And so also, it says there in Isaiah 58 verse 12, that they that shall be of us will build again the old ruins. It's a picture of the restoration of the church, but it's also a picture of the restoration of lost truth. Generations will be brought back into truth that have lost out. God will restore and build, a, and you'll become builders of lost truth, building bridges, not barriers, building hope and not fear. I believe we are called to be builders of broken lives. And what more wonderful thing than to see a life that is hopeless. I know when I was very sick with tuberculosis and very depressed beyond what I could describe, God sent a man from England to come to my bedside and he gave me hope with the words. It's not over. The chapter's closed, but a new chapter's opening and you will go forward and you will bring the message of God's salvation to many, many people. I felt at that time I had no future whatsoever. I had no hope. But I tell you, we can bring hope and help to build people's hopes. Right in the midst of the darkest hour, God will empower you and enable you. So let me give you three or four key things uh, regarding how we can actually 
be able to build broken lives, how we can rebuild relationships, how we can rebuild hope, how we can rebuild vision, how we can equip people to be effective witnesses and soul winners for God from this story in Nehemiah. I hope you'll read the book of Nehemiah again because it is relevant to us in this day because he lived in the day of desolation, the walls were broken down, no honor, no respect, no hope, great devastation. But God is restoring what's been broken down. Amen. God is restoring paths to dwell in. Amen. God is re restoring clear purpose to his people. So we don't live carelessly anymore, but we know we're set apart for God. And we know we have a great calling and anointing on our lives. So we keep ourselves walking in honor of his name, to walk in submission to his will, and then we will know that anointing. So number one, he worked with the king. Nehemiah could not have done this on his own, but he went to the king. Well, we have gone to the king of kings and lord of lords and we have heard his heart, and we have heard his call. It's time to rebuild broken lives. It's time to bring back the prodigals. It's time to get your hopes up for unsaved loved ones. It's time for us to engage ourselves in the work of the kingdom and serve the king. And as he went to the king, the king listened to him he was sad when he first went to the king. And the king said, why are you so sad? Why is your countenance so negative? And he told him that the walls were broken down, there was devastation, there was hopelessness. And as he shared the vision, the king then asked him, how can I help you? And I believe we're gonna be surprised at some of the people that's going to help us. Amen? I've been surprised. For example, when we were in Dar es Salaam, we were invited to go and minister and do an interview with the Muslim network covering the whole of that nation. We didn't expect to have a massive audience of Muslim people to hear the gospel, but we were invited to go. Some people said, I don't know if you should or not. <laughs> but we were given liberty and I was able to speak the word clearly. And God can open doors that would be amazing for you to speak through. God can give you help from the most unexpected sources. God can give you divine connections. And so it says there in Nehemiah, or sorry, it says in Ecclesiastes 3.3, it's a time to build, it's a time to build. So this is the time, it's a time to build. And so, as he caught the vision, the scripture says how it unfolded that the king began to empower him to rebuild and to restore and to cause that which was destroyed to be brought back into being. And this is what we're about. We're about building broken hearts and homes and families and relationships. The Bible says in Luke chapter 8 verse 1, as Jesus went through the various villages, the scripture says that the 12 were with him. They were with him. And I believe we need to be working with the Lord. Yes, amen. amen. Working with each other. Not trying to make excuses as to why we can't work with this other group or this other denomination. No, I believe we should be looking for ways how we can work with others. Yes. We're not focusing on what we're against. We're focusing on what we're for. And we're for the cross, amen? amen? We're for the blood. We're for the word of God. We're for each other. We're for the home and the family. We believe God has established the home and the family in the earth. And we believe that homes and families like never before need the love of God, need the scriptures, need the prayers of the people of God. The churches need people. And also we in the church, churches need to be reaching out to the communities because they need your help in this community, in every community. They need to be brought in and part of what God is doing today. John chapter 15, verse five. 
Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But we're working with the King. Amen. We're working with the King. Without me, you can do nothing. But with him, all things are possible. Number two, provision to build became available. You may say, well, I can't win anybody. I can't see anybody changing through my witness. You may feel in the family, I can't do anything to win my lost loved ones. Maybe there's hatred, bitterness, division, separation, offense. We can't do it, but he can. Amen. And if you will let him work, he will. We need to recognize when we are to hand it over to God and let him work when we've tried everything. Don't give up your faith. That's the time to believe God and say, yes, Lord. I can't do it, but you can. Yes. And I, I say that you are working, Lord. Yes, you're working. He's working. And the scripture says, he that begun a good work in us will complete it. Hallelujah. So he's working already. So keep speaking that over your family, over your community. Say, yes, it may look bad. It may look impossible, but God is working. I'm praying for it. I've seen this in my own family. As many of you may have heard me tell, which I tell regularly, all nine of a family saved all of them filled with the Holy Spirit Amen. through prayers of one mother. Amen? Amen? Including my father who came to the Lord in his later years. And we were not, we were not meant to be there in, in, the, in the plan of the enemy. The previous generation did not know the great salvation of God. But when somebody starts to pray, Amen. things start to change. Yes. <laughs> when somebody prays prayers of faith, Hallelujah. The enemy has to take his hands off. When you become aggressive in prayer, you will then take control and say, enemy, your time is up. Amen. Get your hands off my family. Break the power of drug abuse, alcohol abuse, bitterness, hatred, every other thing. You can speak the word of life and the name of the Lord will prevail over all other names. So start believing for breakthrough after breakthrough. It's time to rebuild broken lives. And so not only did he go to the king, but number two, the king provided all he needed. And Romans 8, 32 is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Like any good earthly father, our heavenly father delights to shower abundant blessings on you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We've seen this happen in many different nations. I think one of the surprises for us was actually in Romania where they booked a huge sports arena and when I arrived and saw what they booked, I said, we've never been here before, how are you going to fill this? But anyway, the people had been working. We were surprised to find, I don't know, major numbers of young people coming to the sports arena. And we saw the places packed out. We saw people running to the altar. We saw people get healed. And, and when the word of the Lord is believed and when people have expectation and when there's prayer in advance, and I believe the need of the hour is prayers of faith and intercession for the land, for our various countries. And we need to be willing to pay the price and make the sacrifice to put God first. Amen. Even if it means rising at four in the morning, spending a couple of hours, seeking his face, proclaiming victory, not praying pleading prayers, but praying prayers of faith in line with the word. Because what does the scripture say there? We often quote it. Hebrews, it says in uh, Hebrews 10, that God does not want us to cast away our confidence. Hebrews 10, 35. Do not cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might inherit the promise. Don't throw away your confidence. It may look like it hasn't worked in the past, but we're in a new day. Amen. I say to you tonight, I prophesy to you, New doors are opening. God's getting ready to break down barriers that you couldn't have broken before. Give it over to him. 
Don't try to do it yourself. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He cares about you. And so we're not going to let our families be taken to a lost eternity. We're not going to let the devil ruin our land. Jesus is Lord over this country. Jesus is Lord over the UK. You know, I got some statistics yesterday where it is costing in the UK to pay for breakups in marriages. But the cost of breakups across the UK per annum is estimated by the Daily Mail. Think of what that would do for the health service. Think of what that would do to help people that are hurting and broken. Dealing with breakups of families. I want to tell you Satan hates families, but God loves families. And we need to honor our husbands, our wives, our children, and pray for them. We need to realize that love never fails. Amen. That love will get through when nothing else will. When people know you care, they'll listen to what you have to say. So I'm here tonight to tell you, it's time to rebuild broken lives. Amen. It's time to get your hopes back. It's time to say, no, I'm not throwing away my confidence. For God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I believe it's so important for us to also maintain a strong faith and a strong relationship in our own personal prayer life. The scripture says in Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I found from experience, when I was ill with tuberculosis and depression, that it's when I change my focus from poor me, why did this happen to me? I'm so depressed, I don't want to meet anybody. Don't want to ever go out again. Felt my time was up. But whenever I heard the word of the Lord that God had a purpose for me and it wasn't over, those words of hope got me off my, you know, off my pity kind of trip onto the warring path of faith. And I began to speak faith <coughs> and victory. Amen? Amen? And I began to praise the Lord even though I couldn't feel like it naturally. Jesus. And Psalms 40 was my chapter that really changed my life. He brought me out of a horrible pit yes. from the Mary clay. He put a new song in my heart, even oh, praises yeah, yeah. to God. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. Jesus. We're not here just to live for ourselves. We're not just here to have a nice easy time. We're here to change the whole atmosphere in the country. We're here to bring a climate of faith and love, an environment of expectancy. We're here to let the kingdom rule and reign. Amen. His kingdom come, his will be done yes. on earth as it is in heaven. We're here not just to pass our time and hope we get out of here. No, we're here to make a difference and see many, many people saved who are still lost, healed who are sick in body, reconciled who are in division. God Almighty has big plans for all of us. So provision is made available. When you start working with the king and start to build broken lives and lift hurting people, all of heaven's behind you because that's the heart of God. I said, that's the heart of God. Hallelujah. So it's time to rebuild broken lives. Scripture also tells us there in Romans 8, 17, that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 20, verse 32, it says the word will build you up. When you are run down in the natural, maybe you've had a cold or flu, often you will get some kind of a tonic or medicine to help build you up again. Well, I want to tell you the Word of God builds you up. Amen? Amen. Builds you up in your most holy faith. Causes you to rise again and say, oh, you know, the enemy may have thought it was over, but it's not over. The best days are yet to come. God has big plans. Okay, number three, and this is on Nehemiah. Remove the rubbish. As you read the story in Nehemiah, 
as they began to build the walls and restore things uh, into order like God wanted it, there was so much rubbish on the walls that they couldn't actually build. And so they had to stop and say, look, we've got to get rid of the rubbish out of the way so we can build the walls as they ought to be built. And sometimes when you start to rebuild broken lives and reach out to hurting people, there will be all kinds of distractions and rubble, so to speak, to hinder you. But the scripture says that they actually armed themselves with one hand and they built with another. They first of all got rid of the rubbish. And I believe we have got to get rid of the rubbish of unbelief. Amen? Get rid of the rubbish of fear. Get rid of the rubbish of anxiety. Get rid of the rubbish of gossip and criticism. Amen? My, it's gone quiet now. Get rid of rubbish of being casual with your talk and quick to judge other people. And let's speak words of hope and faith and realize life and death in the power of the tongue. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, that we are to cast down every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We have been given power to get rid of the rubbish. Cast down the thoughts of the enemy, demolish arguments, and everything that is against the scripture and against the will of God. He says, we have to do it. God's not going to come down and do it for you. He says, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Colossians 3 verse 9, we need to read it. How they were to put off the old man with his deeds. Read the whole chapter. A wonderful chapter, Colossians chapter 3. Put off the old man, put off all the attitudes that belong to the old life of criticism, division, strife. Put it off. It's rubbish. Ephesians 4.31 says the same. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. We've got to get rid of the rubbish. If we're going to build the walls, we've got to stop allowing the enemy to put things in our way. Amen? And we are going to be rebuilding broken lives and moving forward. Number four, the people united and worked together. As Nehemiah shared the vision of rebuilding broken lives and rebuilding that which was destroyed and the desolation, Scripture says how that others joined him. And as I said at the beginning, it's going to be very important that we're in partnership with all of God's people and we we'll work together because we can't do it ourselves. It's kingdom business, not ours. He's interested in saving the lost. He's interested in empowering people and equipping them to fulfill their call. He's interested in the sick being healed and reconciliation happening where there's been division. So the people united and worked together. We know James 2.17 says, faith without works is dead. We need to count it a privilege to be able to work together. Amen. And it is a privilege because the scripture says in Psalm 133, where brethren dwell together in unity, God commands the blessing, Amen. even life forevermore. And to be in a place of life where the life of God is flowing, where the love of God is flowing, where the grace of God is flowing, I can tell you that's a healthy place. Amen? Amen. It's a healthy place to be. Number five, almost finished. The enemy tried and failed to stop to work. <laughs> the enemy will always try to stop you and distract you and turn you aside. Sometimes it's through offense, sometimes, sometimes it's through strife. But we do not have to allow the enemy to stop the work that God has called us to do. He tried to stop them by different people coming to Nehemiah and his <coughs> building people and saying, you can never do this. Even the walls, if a fox ran against them, they would tumble over and began to take negative, hopeless attitude. But he said, no, we're doing a great work. We're not coming down Amen. to the Valley of Ono. We're not coming down to hear your dis discontent and your discouragement. 
we do not need to give our minds to discouragement or discontent. We must keep our minds full of the word, full of faith in order to do this. The scripture says also in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So we need to use our faith. Some people say, well, what kind of faith really works? It's the faith you use. Amen? It's the faith you use. It's not what it says there. 1 John 5, 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. But your faith only works when you work it. It's like a soldier in a battle situation. He has to use the weaponry in order to win the war. We have been given superior weapons. Hallelujah. That's what Paul said. The weapons of our warfare are not inferior. They are superior. But use those weapons by speaking the word, by living the word, by joining hands with other believers. And so the enemy could not stop the work. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us will prosper, none. Lastly, number six, we can build again. We can build again. You may feel like you haven't seen much encouragement in your family, in your community, in your work or ministry. But I want to tell you it's time to prepare to build again. Amen. God has called us to this very time to rebuild broken lives. Get a vision of the call. Get a vision of the cause, the biggest cause of all, the kingdom of God coming to earth and his kingdom being seen through us, through you and through me. We can build again, it says that in Acts 15, 16, to build again the tabernacle of David. This was, of course, the place of worship, the place of praise. And I believe we need more praise and worship in our churches. I believe we need more praise and worship in our families. I believe we need more praise and worship in our individual lives. To start your day off every day with thanksgiving, that you're breathing, amen? amen. If you're still breathing, you've got a right to praise him. I often say to people, check the person next to you and see how they're breathing. <laughs> and if they are, they should be praising. Amen. Let everything that has breath Lord, praise Lord. the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And so I believe he's restoring praise and worship. He's using us to restore the ruins. Where there's disorder, he wants us to bring order. Where there is selfishness, let there be love. Where there's fear, let faith come. Where there's no hope, let's build hope. I love what it says in Genesis 26, 18. It says, Isaac dug again the wells that the Philistines had filled in. You see, they'd enjoyed the living water in a previous generation. In Abraham's generation that dug many wells, but the Philistines, the enemy, came along and filled in the spring wells and the people were no longer drinking. But I love what it says, Isaac, his son, he dug again the wells the Philistines filled in. It's our job to, to dig the wells of gospel truth. It's our job to dig the wells of the rivers of God and the Holy Spirit. It's our job to give our generation a drink of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's our job to rebuild the broken down walls and the broken lives. And I believe as we do, God Almighty will honor us. We will see his power manifested. We'll see what happened in the ministry that followed when Jesus called his own disciples and said, go forth, preach Mark chapter 16. And they went forth and worked everywhere. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Amen. As we step out and use our faith, yes. God will work with you and you will experience a new anointing to rebuild broken lives, broken situations, and there will be great joy in his house again. Let's stand together, please. Thank you, Lord.
as we come to a place now where we will give opportunity for those who have needs, I want you to keep your faith alive because we're going to minister to people and pray for people who may have anxiety, depression, maybe disease, perhaps there's sadness in your heart because of a broken relationship, a hurt, offense. The healer of broken hearts is here. Jesus is here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Father, thank you for your living word. Thank you, Lord. We are called to rebuild broken lives. That we are anointed to do it. We can't do it ourselves. But we thank you, every one of us are anointed to rebuild broken lives, to reach out to our broken world. Thank you for moving tonight. In Jesus' name. And as we're bowed in prayer, is there anyone here tonight that's not right with the Lord? You'd like to know for sure that you're born again. Perhaps you've never made a total commitment to Christ. You're not sure if you have eternal life. You can know. Scripture says, he that has the Son of God has life. And he that does not have the Son of God does not have life. If you've never been truly born again, then you're gonna have an opportunity now. If you're backslidden or cold or away from God, you can come tonight. We won't embarrass anybody. Just lift your hand where you are and we'll pray a simple prayer. If you're not sure you're right with the Lord, do not leave this building, do not leave this church. This is your moment. You may never have another one like this. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, put your hand up, say yes. I'd like to be sure I'm right with God. I'd like to be sure my sins are forgiven. I would like to be sure that I'm washed and forgiven and born again. Just put your hand up where you are and say yes to the Lord right now. Say yes to him. Thank you, Jesus. I just wanted to pray this simple prayer. Repeat it after me, please. Oh God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I acknowledge I am a sinner. I know I cannot save myself. But I thank you, Lord Jesus. You died on the cross for me. I repent of my sins. I invite you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Cleanse me in your precious blood. For I surrender my all to you now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you for your presence. Now, anyone who has sickness or depression, while we're still in prayer together, would you lift your hand where you are? We're going to speak the word over you now. If you have a need of any kind, God bless you. Yes. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, God bless you. Many hands go up. You need healing from any form of anxiety, depression, maybe emotional hurt, broken heart, or there's offense, yes, God bless you, thank you. As our heads are still bowed, keep in the attitude of faith, just now, the Holy Spirit is already beside you. Okay, let him touch you. Something's going to happen to you right now. And so in the name of Jesus, I speak healing over you from any hurt, emotionally, healing from broken hearts. I speak healing from offense, from anxiety, in Jesus' name, I speak healing from all disease. I speak healing from any hurt that you've suffered in the past. And I say to you, receive that healing, spirit, soul, mind, and body. I speak in the name of Jesus. And I say, receive your healing. It's already been given. Take it by faith and say, yes, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Now I lift your hands up and start to worship him. Receive it. Say, thank you, Lord. I receive by faith. I receive by faith. Hallelujah. You can watch this program again, along with other messages by Dr. Stewart, by going on to our YouTube channel. Just look up CCN Northern Ireland. Make sure you click subscribe to receive email notifications of further videos we upload. 
And don't forget to follow us on Facebook to receive all the latest updates, news and upcoming events. Many people are encouraged by these programmes but have not yet been in touch. So please email us today and let us know how these messages by Dr. Stewart and the Word of God that he shares are helping you. Let us know that you are praying for us and if you would like to see more programmes like this made possible, we encourage you to support the ministry of CCN with a gift of any amount. So thank you for watching today. We really do appreciate your prayers and financial support. Stay tuned for our contact details coming up and how you can obtain our latest free Hope Builders. Christian Communications Network, founded by Dr. Cecil Stewart OBE, are reaching out to the world with a positive, life-changing message of hope and to bring encouragement and guidance to those who have yet to discover their full potential and destiny in God. Cecil was born in County Monaghan, Ireland. He left the family farm in his late teens and moved to Belfast to establish a career. He founded the Sandown Group in 1968. Over the following 30 years, this grew to become the largest privately owned group of nursing homes in the British Isles. In 1997, 30 nursing homes were sold to allow Cecil to devote more time to his Christian charity and broadcast work. Cecil was honoured in 1998 by Queen Elizabeth with an OBE in recognition of providing professional nursing care for thousands of vulnerable people and for creating employment for almost 2,000 people during the Troubles in Northern Ireland. Dr Stewart conducts life-giving seminars and events where thousands have been empowered and inspired. The major missions have given hope and new life to multitudes. We have gathered in conference centres and fields across Africa and Europe to hear God's message of salvation, hope and healing. His programmes go around the world through television, radio, internet and print. Dr Stewart has written a number of books including What Do You Mean It's Impossible? You can also benefit from Bible teaching materials, including these Hope Builders. Our television program, Deciding Your Destiny, can be seen on Revelation TV every Sunday at 10pm. Both Cecil and Evelyn have faced life-threatening health challenges, but by the grace of God have been raised up to continue to walk in faith and victory today. Our focus these days is very much on empowering youth and families and enabling them to live a God-honouring life in the midst of a culture of compromise. This vision inspires believers to remove barriers and build bridges across cultures so that people of all nationalities and age groups can maximise their influence for the Kingdom of God in a world that is so desperately in need of hope. I do have hope and I, I do have expectancy. I believe we're going to see a spiritual awakening in this country. I do have a heart to reach out to the UK and other parts of Europe. And yes, I've hoped that the gospel is the answer and the word of the Lord, when people take it seriously, will transform their lives. For further information on the ministry of CCN, including becoming a prayer partner or helping us financially, contact us through the details on the screen. Northern Ireland is on Facebook so make sure to add us as your friend and click like for upcoming events and updates. Christian Communications Network, check us out on Facebook. What do you mean it's impossible? The inspirational Cecil Stewart story. What happens when you encounter life's choppy waters? Find out more and purchase your copy today. Christian Communications Network is on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to CCN Northern Ireland where there are a variety of messages with Dr Cecil Stewart from various nations around the world, so make sure to check us out. 
Dr. Tessa Stewart has multiple resources, including these amazing hope builders, such as It's Not Over, Give It Over and Get On, Followers Who Finish, Sights, Sounds and Seasons, and many others. So make sure you get your free copy today. If you were encouraged by today's programme and would like to sow financial seed into the ministry or receive prayer, our details are coming up and we would love to hear from you. information on today's program contact us today CCN 547 Antrim Road Belfast County Antrim Northern Ireland BT 15 3BU telephone 02890 779 552 email ccn at ccnorg.com check us out on Facebook and YouTube and visit our website ccnorg.com <music>